welcome to worship on this, the last day of May in 2020. It's the spirit of Pentecost, the winds of change, the flames of a new song. Today is Pentecost Sunday, the day when the Holy Spirit comes to the people of God like a gale force wind and a wildfire. The day when the people gathered are changed because of their interaction with the Holy Spirit. The day when regardless of language spoken, regardless of degrees earned, regardless of the power and privilege, regardless of personal wealth or status, regardless of the baggage or sin, regardless the Spirit of God was available to all people who gathered to worship. Today is the day of the winds of change. Today is the day when we receive the flames of a new song to sing in our heart. When things happen in our lives that we didn't expect, a global pandemic, a new diagnosis, the birth of a new opportunity, the death of a loved one, a job loss, or a new job, but in a different city, away from family and friends. When things in our lives happen that we didn't expect, it's our opportunity to call upon the Pentecost spirit, to dig deep into our faith and rely on the God who surrounds us and is within us, to reach out for care and support, and the grace that others can offer to us, and to gather as a band of Christ's disciples to worship, sing, and pray. So let's sing our opening hymn together. On Pentecost they gathered quite early in the day, a band of Christ's disciples to worship, sing, and pray.
gather for worship in the safety of our own homes, but with hearts and spirits united in faith and in hope. We gather on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe and the Attawandaran, the Huron and the Wendat peoples, peoples who for generations have known of the sacred fire of blessings, the sacred fire where the spirit comes anew to offer wisdom, insight, hope, and healing to all who sit by its flame. And so this morning we have our Christ candle as a reminder that Jesus is the light of the world that shines in the darkness. And we also have a Pentecost candle as a symbol of the single flame of hope, of the wild fires of Pentecost and the ways that the Spirit can touch us all when we too gather around the light, around the sacred fires of Pentecost, to be reminded and renewed by the flame, the gift of smoke, and the opportunity to refresh and be blessed by the light of Pentecost. Let us worship the Holy Spirit who comes with and around who we are, where we are. Let us worship God.
let us hear now the words for our call to worship. Holy God of Pentecost, we come to worship to give you thanks for this day and for the blessings within it. We have known of your spirit, and today we prepare to receive you once again as we ready our hearts to worship in your love. Turn our heads from the horizon of the past where we are comfortable in the ways that we know you, and instead turn us toward your horizon of new hope, new opportunity, new discipleship. Channel our mission and our service toward your justice. Launch our outreach toward your equity. Open our hearts to your Holy Spirit on this Pentecost Sunday. Spirit of life, come on to me. Sing in my heart all the stirrings of compassion. Blow in the wind, rise in the sea. Move in the hand, giving life the shape of justice. Roots hold me close, wings set me free. Spirit of life, come to me, come to me. Will you pray with me? Holy and generous God, we feel the breeze of your spirit, the warmth of the wind, the cooling in our hearts. And we ask, O oh God, that you would surround us with energy and life of love, of compassion, of caring. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the wind of generosity, with the wind of optimism, with the wind of creativity. Help us feel the energy of new life in this time. In these Pentecost moments of our new beings, we pray, O oh God, that you will sustain our faith and have us find new ways to be with you in the world. These are different times, God, and we are feeling different feelings. But we hold in the steadfast knowledge that we are not alone, that you are with us. Thanks be to you. Amen.
Let us hear the words from Scripture as we read from the book of Acts in the second chapter, verses 1 to 21. And I'm reading from the message. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. And then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks. And they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. And when they heard the sound, they came on the run. When they heard, one after another, their own mother tongues being spoken, they were thunderstruck. They could not, for the life of them, figure out what was going on, and they kept saying, Aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, Pontus and Asia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joked. They're drunk on cheap wine. That's when Peter stood up and back by the other, other eleven, spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people are not drunk, as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters. Your young men will see visions, your old men dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they will prophesy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous. And whoever calls out for help, to me, God, will be saved. For the word of God in the spirit, among us and within us. Thanks be to God. The spirit of Pentecost, the winds of change, the flames of a new song. The spirit of Pentecost came like a large wind, like a gale forced wind, and it filled that space. And no one knew where it came from. And then like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread throughout the people. Like wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread. Like a breath of fresh air, the Holy Spirit spread. Like the embrace of a hug, the Holy Spirit spread. Like love that is unconditional, like faith that is rooted in justice, the Holy Spirit spread. And they understood. No matter where they were from, the people who were there understood. No matter what language they spoke, they understood. No matter what race or religion, they understood. Whether they were binary or non-binary, gay or straight, they understood. 
when the eyes of the people gathered were opened, they could see. When the ears of the people were opened, they could hear. When the veil of the past triumphalism had been revealed, they understood. When the manipulation that occurred in the darkness was now seen in the light, they understood. Like a breath of fresh air, the Holy Spirit spread. Like the embrace of a hug, the Holy Spirit spread like love that is unconditional, like faith that is rooted in justice. The Holy Spirit spread. On this Pentecost day, my prayer is that the Holy Spirit will spread amongst us and within us. May the Spirit of Pentecost bring the winds of change and may they be gale force and may they be like wildfire so that they might flame the flames of a new song for First St. Andrew's United Church. May the Holy Spirit spread like a breath of fresh air like the embrace of a hug, like love that is unconditional and faith that is rooted in justice, because God said, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people, the shooed and the barefooted, the haves and the have-beens, those who have done and those who are done with it all. Because God says, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Your young women will share grace and your old crowns will share mercy. Your non-binary will proclaim truth and your trans will offer transformation. Because God says, when the time is right, I will pour out my Holy Spirit upon those who serve me, women and men, non-binary and trans, gay and straight, children and elder. They'll prophesy. They'll testify. They will be believed both in a sanctuary of worship and in a court of law. Those who serve me, all people, all creatures of this God and kin, I will place my spirit upon them and you will know them. You will know them when they share their authentic heart. You will know them when they are honest and open and vulnerable. You will know them when truth-telling is their cornerstone and trust is their faith. You will know them when discipleship is the meal upon which they feast and grace is not a blessing asked at a mealtime but a mission shared throughout a lifetime. Those who serve me through faith and service and the arts, I will pour upon them my Pentecost spirit. My Pentecost spirit, I will break open before them. My Pentecost spirit, I will pour out upon them like the bread and the cup, like a gale forest wind, like a sacred fire, like a breath of fresh air or an embrace of a hug, because God says, I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below. I am in the bread 
and the wine. I am in the fire and the smoke. I am in the sun and the moon. I am in the people of God and all of creation. And so I will see my Pentecost spirit. I will see my Pentecost spirit in the spirit of compassion and empathy, kindness and justice, equity, faith, hope, and love, with the greatest of these being love. And therefore, I will see my Pentecost spirit in you, for you are my beloved. May it be so, and all God's people can say, Amen. to be able to serve you communion. And so we wanted to come to you from our kitchen table. This kitchen table is a family heirloom for me, from my great aunt and uncle, Auntie Margaret and Uncle Carl, on my dad's side of the family. And when we think about communion tables, they are typically precious heirlooms made of strong oak, symbols of strength and connection and times before us. And so today, as we gather at our kitchen table, we want to take the simple gifts that are before us, just like Jesus did when he was with his disciples for the Last Supper in the upper room. He simply took what was before them. And so we invite you on this day to take what is before you as a symbol, a symbol of Jesus breaking open for us opportunities to learn of new mission and service, justice, empathy, compassion, and hope for all. We invite you to take what is before you to pour out of you all that God has already offered to you that is within you to share with the world. When Jesus was with his disciples, he was preparing them 
to move forward in a time when he would no longer be with them and reminding them of all of the rich resources that they already had within them and the blessing of the spirit, the spirit of Pentecost that would always be with them. That is the spirit with which we leave you today, the spirit that comes in a language that all can hear and understand in a language that all can be received, welcomed, affirmed, accommodated, in a language that all are embraced in faith, hope, and love, with the greatest of these being love. Will you pray with us? Holy and gracious God, we open our hearts to you today. We break open our very being so that you might enter, that you might flow through our lungs with fresh air and vibrancy, that you might flow through our veins the rush of adrenaline and excitement and hope and vision for new ministry in new ways to new people. We thank you, O oh God, for the privilege of worship, for the privilege of being together in heart and mind and spirit. There are so many ways that you support us each and every day. Perhaps the greatest of those ways is your presence. A presence that surrounds us, a presence that enfolds us, a presence that encourages us, pushes us forward. We pray, O oh God, that we all might be present that we all might encapsulate the love that you share with us in everything we think and say and do. And we remember the words that you gave us to pray, O oh God, that we might remember your glory and that we might remember we are never alone.
his community, with his family, Jesus gathered at the table to be in communion, to share communion. He blessed the bread and he broke it open and says, I break open my heart for you. Take and eat and do this in remembrance of me so that you will always have within you this moment of ministry that we have shared together. And then he took the cup and he blessed it and he poured out grace and mercy. And he said, take and drink and do this in remembrance of me and pour out to the world all the justice and kindness, empathy and equity that we have received so that all the world might know the glory of this cup. So friends, I invite you to take what is before you and break open yourself and this symbol. Pour out yourself and this symbol so that the mission and ministry of the grace and goodness of Jesus Christ might continue for this day and forevermore. And for that, all God's people can say, Amen. Jesus was with his disciples at the table, sharing story and food and drink. Jesus was at the table, just like we are, preparing to receive the spirit of Pentecost within the very things that are before us, bread and wine, cinnamon buns and coffee, tea and scones. What is your gift of blessing this morning? Take what is before you. Knowing that it is a privilege to have something to break open and something to pour out. Allow your hearts to break open Allow love to pour out. As you receive these simple gifts before you, might you remember Jesus with his disciple at the table. And he said, I break open my heart for you as he took the bread and broke it. I pour out my love for you as he took the wine and poured it into the cup. In the blessing of the elements, he blessed the people, and that blessing remains with us today. So take and eat and do this in remembrance of me. Drink and do this in remembrance of the Son who has risen to offer new life and new love, and new hope for all.
Will you pray with me the prayers after communion? Holy God, for your forgiveness, we are so grateful that you have once again invited us to come to your table to be blessed with your goodness, freed and forgiven from our sin. And we ask, O oh God, that the feast that we have shared might fill us with your grace and your mercy. As we go from this place, from this table, might we always be reminded of those who are still hungry and those who still thirst for justice. Might you use our hands and our feet to be your disciples in the world. We offer our gratitude for this table and we give you our thanks. And we ask that your spirit of Pentecost would fire within us a flame of new opportunity for mission and ministry in your church, in your world. We pray these things in Jesus' name, and all God's people can say, Amen. There are so many ways that we can share our offerings. We offer ourselves, our gifts and our service, our hearts and our love. And we share while we can in the times that we have. And so I thank you for your tremendous gift of offering, for those who continue to share in leadership and in hope, and for those who stand in the sidelines, encouraging and offering compassion. We also give our gratitude for those who continue to offer their financial resources to First St. Andrews United Church and to the mission and service of the United Church of Canada. May this beautiful thing that has just happened be worship. Worship to our God who offers to us the Pentecost spirit of hope. May it be your hope on this day. And all God's people can say, Oh, man.